I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. We'll discuss a very important question based on limits in this particular video. It's a part of our review for examination. We are given that the limit when x approaches 0 for square root of ax plus b minus 5 over x is equal to 1. Find value of a and b. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now here is a very important concept which we should understand before answering this question. Now in this particular case, if I substitute 0 here, we get what? We get something over, which is, we get square root of 0 plus b minus 5 over 0, right? Now, this is not an indeterminate. Now, the limit exists. We are saying that the limit exists. It means what? It means that we should have a form which is 0 by 0. That is kind of important to understand, right? Only then the limit is going to exist. Is it clear to you? So this particular condition gives you that the numerator should be equal to x, right? So at least, right, one factor is x. So, so that means that the numerator, which is square root of ax plus b minus 5 should be equal to 0 for x equals to 0. Only then the limit can exist. Correct? So, so that gives you the condition that square root of b should be, or you can say like this, is equal to 0. And that gives you the condition that b equals to 25. So we do get the value of b which should be 25 and now we need to find the value of a right. So this is this is part one. Now let's see how to find the value of a. We should actually rationalize as we do normally for any square root functions given in this fashion. So we can write this as square root of ax, we can write b as 25 now, since we have found the value, minus 5 over x. So that becomes the equation now. Now to find this limit, what we should do is, we should rationalize this. So the limit, when x approaches 0, for square root of ax plus 25 minus 5 over x. We need to rationalize, so we get square root of ax plus 25 plus 5 divided by square root of ax plus 25 plus 5. Correct? So, so rationalizing, we get the expression in the numerator as squares, difference of squares. So we get ax plus 25 minus 25 over x times. We have square root of ax plus 25 plus 5. Now this could be simplified, so we have limit x approaches 0. So the numerator is now ax, and the denominator is x times square root of ax plus 25, within brackets, right, plus 5. So now we can cancel the x terms, and that was the whole idea. So do you understand why we did so, so that makes sense? And now we can substitute 0 for x and find our solution. So we get this answer as a over 
square root of 25 plus 5 which is a over 10 5 plus 5 right? now we are given that this limit is actually equal to what this limit is equal to 1 right so since this is equal to 1 we'll equate this to equal to 1 and that gives you the solution for a and a is equals to 1 times 10 or is equal to 10 correct so we get our solution that a should be equal to 10 perfect so we have both the answers b is 25 for us and a is 10 for us so we can write down our answer which is a equals to 10 and b equals to 25 is that clear to you so that is how we should be solving such questions on limits so it does require a bit of reverse calculations right and i hope this helps you to understand the concept many questions could be based on this where you are given the limit and the conditions are such that they can help you find the function itself so in this particular question we found the function right so so it could have been a question which uh, i could write like this also in general i could write this as limit x approaches zero instead of writing that i could have written f of x minus five over x and you could have done this or i could have write like this do you see that so all kinds of questions, and I can write a value here, right? Let it be 1 or any value k. So any general question of this form can be solved using this method. Are you getting the concept, right? Whether square root or not square root, you may write any function there. We could solve a similar question using the concept given here. The only thing which you have to consider is, that the limit will exist if you somehow show that it's indeterminate. So if it is an indeterminate, then it can work out. Perfect. Does it make sense? I hope that does, right? Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.